Warning, warning poor air quality detected. Hey there. Well, it seems there's lots of interest in these new sensors from IKEA. So I had to pop out and go and get the Alpstuga because there seems to be a lot of discussion about this product online. So what we're going to do today, we're going to set it up, we're going to connect it up to Home Assistant via Matter over Thread, and then we're going to have a look at what exactly the sensors are they've put inside this device to get it to sell at 29 US dollars. So the Alpstuga is measuring carbon dioxide, particulate matter, temperature and humidity. So looking at the box you can see just how tiny this device is. On the front they're making it quite clear that this is a matter device and on the rear of the box here you can see that there's no USB-C cable or charger included. It's made of a nice injection molded plastic. Um, on the top of the device we have a nice large clicky button which clicks us through the different menu options. Uh, we have our display over on the front here. On the underside we have another four buttons. We have our matter QR code. We have our USB-C charging port on the rear and we have some ventilation holes here. This does have a fan inside it as what's required with particulate monitors so it will suck the air through here. Once we power the device up you'll see that it first of all comes up with these four little dashes and the CO2 logo and it just takes a little bit of time as with most particulate matter sensors and CO2 sensors they do need to warm up before they start operating so it's got this display waiting to get started once it lights up you'll see it will then be in the pairing code and we can scan the QR code and connect it up to matter there we go, we've got our CO2 showing and we can now start clicking through. We've got the PM 2.5, we've got the temperature, we've got humidity and we've got our clock. As you'll see, when the clock is turned on like this, it starts at zero. Now you can use the buttons on the bottom here to set the clock, but when it goes on with the pairing, once it's paired, you'll see that the clock will be set with a time from Home Assistant. Next, I opened up my Home Assistant app, selected Settings, Devices and Services, and then selected Add an Integration, Add a Matter Device, no, it's not new. Next, I scanned the QR code, selected Add to Home Assistant, took about 30 seconds, and then it was connected. From here, you can either change the name or stick with the existing one. Having a look at the device within Home Assistant, over here we have the switch. Now this will turn on or off the display. It doesn't turn the device off, just the display. So air quality, this will give you either good or bad or something else. Then we've got our CO2 reading there. So you can see it's been fluctuating a little bit. Apparently it takes sort of 12 to 24 hours to settle down once you've first plugged it in. And it's recommended during this time to give it some time outside in the fresh air as well. Um, humidity we've got here pulling in at 68%. We've got the PM 2.5 currently reading zero and temperature at 23.2. Now great to see here that this is a thread device which is not only an end but also a routing device so this will help uh, improving our thread mesh. So I've hooked this up alongside my air gradient sensor so we can try and get an idea of the accuracy with regards to the two sensors. So currently we're looking at CO2, we've got 521 on the IKEA and 521 on the air gradient. So that's pretty close. Let's start scrolling through and have a look at some of the settings. So PM 2.5, we've got a zero showing on both. So that's pretty good. Um, temperature wise, 21.5, 21.8, that's pretty close. Humidity, 71%. 75%. So based off of these, I'm pretty impressed with this little sensor. So having a look at the sensor inside here, um, it's from the Sensorian Sen 6X series of sensors. And these offer a whole range of sensors, as you can see. The one specific to this device is the Sen 63C, which does particulate matter, relative humidity and temperature, as well as CO2. And you can see the way this is designed. You've got your airflow coming through here. You've got a fan at the base here that's pulling the air through. And it's first going through the CO2, 
then the relative humidity and temperature, and then through the particulate monitoring sensor. So the startup time on the sensor is pretty quick, 100 milliseconds. The lifetime of the sensor is 24 hour day operation, greater than 10 years. Um, the acoustic level 0.2 m dBA. Uh, well, when I listen to it, you could hardly hear the movement of air through the fan at all. So if we look at the CO2 sensor, we've got a range of 0 to 32,000 parts per million. Um, accuracy between 400 and 5,000 is plus minus 100 ppm, which I think is pretty good for the sort of price value of the sensor. And response time is 60 seconds. So it's great news to see that the sensor is already available in ESP Home. And as you can see, you then get access to the 1, 2.5, 4 and the 10 parts per million. It seems that it automatically has a cleaning mode that it goes into. When it is running, it will go through this little boost of air that will automatically clean the sensor. IKEA provides clear guide for the application of this device, which is available for download off of the website. As you can see, it gives you the usage of all the different buttons. So button one is for changing the display. Button two uh, puts the device into the pairing mode. Button three, short press between 12 and 24 hours. Uh, button four, change the hours and minutes. Press the button five is to press to change the hours and minutes of the clock. So the interesting thing is that when I did pair it, it did pull in the time, but every time you unplug it, it lose the time and you do need to set that again. So it would be nice if it could pull the time from the matter integration. Having looked at the graph of running it over the last 12 hours or so, you can see over here as it was calibrating itself it was between the 3 and the 440 mark and then I put it in my bedroom when I had a sleep and you'll see here that it was going up to around 800, 830 thereabouts. Now if we compare this for example to another device in our system so over here I've got the Air Gradient which is a pretty expensive device I think it's around the $300 we look at the indoor, I put placed it alongside the device and we were getting very similar numbers. We can see there around 870, 880. And as, as they've said, they are only promising 100 um, ppm uh, CO2 deviation. So it's working really, really well as per their suggestions. So overall, I'm really impressed with this little device. Coming in at $30 uh, with all of these sensors included and the degree of accuracy that we're getting when compared to a much more expensive sensor, I would say that this is a great way of going into the air quality sensing uh, solutions without spending a huge amount of money. Um, as you've seen in the video, int integrated very easily with Home Assistant, do bear in mind you do need a thread border router. I'm using the ZBT2, which I'm super impressed with. I will be doing a video on that later. It's an absolutely amazing device. Now, just to confirm, when I was talking about ESP Home, I did try and connect to the device using ESP Connect, and this doesn't seem to be an ESP32 that they're using in there because nothing was picked up. So um, you couldn't flash this with ESP Home, unfortunately, which could have been a bit of fun. But it was interesting to see that, that with that Sincerian sensor, that you've got all of those options if you did decide to pull that out and do your own implementation with ESP Home. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm really interested in seeing what the other devices are going to be like that IKEA is sending out. I might even try the hub as well just to see what they're doing on that. It seems to me they're spending a lot of time and effort in building a really reliable set of smart home devices. Well, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really love bringing you this content and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.